Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Artist Loft drawing class. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I'm thrilled to be partnered with Michaels to bring you this ongoing weekly drawing series with uh, some free classes and some premium classes. So if you enjoy this class uh, this week on body proportions, make sure that you sign up for next week's class, which is a premium class on uh, rendering body proportions more realistically, also using the, the wooden mannequin here. Um, and that class has a small fee. So the recording, as Raina said, for this class will be posted on YouTube tomorrow and the, the Michaels website. But next week with the premium class, the uh, YouTube link uh, recording will only be sent to those who registered for the class. So make sure you sign up for that uh, in the same place that you signed up for tonight's class on the Michaels website um, for next week on the 23rd. And um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, the wooden mannequin itself before I switch to my tabletop view because um, I'm not going to be able to show you the mannequin itself and my drawing at the same time. So I do have a few little images that I, I made that I'll be working from on my desk that have uh, the wooden mannequin in some poses. For those of you who don't actually have um, a wooden mannequin, although it was on the supply list, but I just always try to make allowances for folks who weren't able to get all the supplies on the supply list, um, because I know sometimes that might be difficult, but you really want to have your own wooden mannequin. And this is the Artist Loft brand. And um, it is, I think, six inches. Um, but there's a variety of sizes of these and you can get them online or you can order them you know, through the Michaels website and do curbside pickup. There's a, a number of um, convenient options to, to get your own. But like I said, I will have some printouts so that there'll be some still images that you can easily snap some, some screenshots or some pictures of when I, I put those on the screen and just a little bit when we start drawing. Okay, um, and I can, uh, well, I'll get to everything on my desk in, in just a minute, but before I switch to my tabletop view, I want to talk a little bit about basic body proportions using the, the mannequin itself. Um, but I'll just go ahead and say the supplies that we have on the supply list were just some sketching pencils, a drawing pad, and um, an eraser, and then you're going to want a ruler. And you're going to want a ruler for a couple of different reasons. Um, we're not going to be measuring anything too precisely. We just want to have um, a ruler to take some measurements of, of your head um, specifically so that you can figure out how many heads tall you are, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so the average human being is five to eight of their heads tall. That's how we measure body proportions. So we don't measure human body proportions in terms of, um, you know, measurements that you would take with a ruler, we use that person's head, and then we measure how many of their heads they are tall. So the um, average person is five to eight of their heads tall, the wooden mannequin is going to be eight heads. So I always like to joke, it's like um, Giselle, I used to call my wooden mannequin in my class Giselle, like a supermodel, because most of us are not going to be eight of our heads tall. Sp um, specifically, people who are born with uteruses. So people born male, people born female um, are going to have just different body proportions. The average um, person born male will typically be closer to eight of their heads tall. And then um, those born with uteruses or those born female um, at birth will typically have five to eight. So I am six and a half of my heads tall. And the way that you can easily measure your head would be to take your ruler and take a book or maybe your sketchbook and put the sketchbook on the crown of your head and balance it on the crown of your head. And once you have it balancing up there and you'll remember when we talked about facial proportions and the proportions of the human head, 
Um, I did this as well, or I mentioned it, might not have actually done it on screen, but because I want you to take note of the fact that the crown of your head is way up here. It's at the top. It's where the book will balance. I see a lot of people balancing books on their heads, which makes me very happy. Um, okay, and then when the book is balanced there, this is a lot of moving parts, but you can take your ruler, make sure the zero side is at the top, because this is the easiest way to do it, unless you have a friend handy who can help you. And put your finger where your chin is in that measurement, if the ruler is touching the book, and then you can measure the length of your head. So my head from the crown of the head to my chin is about nine inches. So I can take that measurement from my chin and stand up nice and tall and see where the next nine inches is going to fall. And I'm willing to bet on pretty much everyone it is going to fall right here at the nipple line or the, the breast plate line, the highest part, highest elevational point on your chest. Um, it's going to be where the second head length falls, and that's about right for me. The third head length is going to fall around the smallest part of the waist. The fourth head length will typically, and again, I'm using words like typically, approximately, thereabouts, generally, there's no perfectly proportioned body. There's no body that we look at and we measure all other bodies against and say, well, compared to the standard body, this body is blank. You know, it's that person's proportions according to their unique proportions. So uh, these measurements do break down if, um, you know, you're not eight heads tall. Like I am six and a half of my heads tall. So my third head length is not at the smallest part of my waist. My fourth head length doesn't fall perfectly at the bottom of my hips, but on a standard, you know, the standard here, the wooden mannequin that's eight heads tall, it does. So the bottom of the fourth head length, and I'm gonna draw this again. So if you're, if you're losing me as I'm just labeling it like this, don't worry about it. Um, I just wanna run through it one time, pointing at the wooden mannequin. So the fourth head length is at the bottom of the uh, hips. Um, the fifth head length is typically mid thigh. Sixth head length is um, mid calf. Seventh head length around the ankle. And then the eighth head length is like tip of the toes because we're counting the foot pointing down uh, is how we're getting that eight heads length down the, the wooden mannequin. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to my desktop view here. Whoops. And just a quick reminder to tag your work uh, from class tonight with the hashtags make it with Michael's or Michael's classes and follow or tag me uh, directly on Instagram so that I'll be able to see your posts. Um, I'm at Adrian Hodge Art, and there's some of my uh, personal work if you're interested that I do using primarily calligraphy ink and some other places you can find me online uh, like on Facebook I'm Adrian Hodge Fine Art and directly after class at about 7.05 uh, central time I'll be on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art doing um, a little live Q&A so if you have any lingering questions after class tonight you can join me there um, are there any questions at this point? I've seen a lot of things popping up at the chat, but I haven't really been looking. Raina, is there anything jumping out? Um, no, Allie says that the, the wooden girl is six heads, just in case anybody wants to know. And Allie would like to know if you have any lighting tips for the wooden person. Um, yeah, you definitely want... Um, a strong light source cast across so like if you have a, a table lamp or um something that you can grab so that you've got a, a strong light um like when i staged these photos earlier i had a lamp so that i got a really strong uh contrasting light to happen because that's going to definitely help um with with sketching some gesture drawings tonight or bodies in movement which was how uh the class was was listed online. So somebody said this one was six of its heads tall. 
I do not think so. Let's see. The head length on the mannequin, on this mannequin, uh, is that's about one. Yeah, it's about it's about eight inches. Oh, so I have the eight inch one, not the the six inch one, but it's eight of its heads tall here. So see the the first head length is from the zero to the one. The second one is right there at the uh, the breast where the breastplate is the the highest. The third head length is the smallest part of the waist there. Fourth head length bottom of the hips, fifth head length, mid thigh, sixth head length is around the kneecap, seventh is mid calf. I might have misspoke when I was labeling them out loud a minute ago. When I got to the six and the seven, I think I might have said something different. And then the, so yeah, the seventh one is close to the ankle, and then the eighth one would be the whole foot. So it's eight of its wooden heads tall there. Okay, and so that's how I've sketched it out here. And so we're just going to sketch a really generic um, version of this real quick. And then uh, we'll talk about gestures and uh, bodies in movement. Um, okay, and there's one class that uh, I'm going to refer back to tonight from this uh, series, and that is the class on sharpening, where I sharpened my pencil like this. It was the class on uh, tonal shading with and without a ground. You can easily find that on YouTube if you search Artist Loft, tonal shading with and without a ground, um, just because I'm gonna probably be using my pencil on its side like that tonight. And just in case anybody is wondering how I, I sharpened my pencil um, like that in that class. I, I take a lot of time to talk about sharpening pencils in that way. Um, I have someone asking, what can they do if they don't have a ruler? Um, you can use a piece of paper and uh, try to just hold, hold the piece of paper, like maybe fold it in half. And then how I held the ruler up, you know, at my chin and put my finger where the mark was on my chin just you know mark it on the piece of paper where your chin line is and use the top of the paper where the crown of your head is um i can demonstrate that if you need but i think that's pretty straightforward and then just use the you know the measurement that you created on the piece of paper to measure your body and then you can easily see how many heads tall you are because that's very helpful um to know what your your body proportions are in relationship to to your head measurement because then if you were drawing you know a photograph of yourself you it would very much help to know how many head lengths you need to be and when you're drawing anyone and we're going to have a lot of uh figure drawing classes going forward in this series which i'm excited to share with you all um that um that there will be some a lot of figure drawing classes coming up and I'll be providing um, reference images um, of, of a model soon to get us started in that series. Um, but for now, I'm using the wooden mannequin for this class tonight. And then I'll just uh, go ahead and put this on screen what the next week's premium class is going to be also using the wooden mannequin, but we'll go in more depth as far as adding value to render it realistically. So um, tonight we're just gonna uh, be very loose um, with these gestures. And um, so we, we won't have live models, but we will have um, reference images of, of a model that I will collect, at least in the first, first few classes. Um, and the model will be wearing a leotard um so yeah okay so um yeah and that's very exciting i'm excited about that so stay tuned for for those classes coming up okay so like i said i'm gonna have my wooden model model positioned off screen but we're going to use these little images that i collected earlier of the mannequin in some some interesting movements and poses. 
Um, but before we do that, I'm just going to sketch right on this uh, printout here and just do a quick little almost stick figure sketch of those basic body proportions. So if you just want to do this along with me real quick, just to get a feel for these eight head lengths, um, we'll just draw a little oval or egg shape. Actually, let me do that a little bigger. That feels silly to draw it so small. Um, if you're doing it big on your paper, make sure that you give yourself enough length on the page to fit eight of these heads in. So we're just going to do like an oval. It doesn't have to be a perfect egg shape. We're not going to worry too much about, you know, actual body, body parts and everything tonight. We're just getting the basic proportions. So we can use a series of shapes similar to the shapes that we see on the, the wooden mannequin. So I'm just going to start sketching it and then make adjustments as needed to measure the head lengths. And you can use your ruler. So measure how tall or how long you made the head. So I did pretty much the same as the wooden mannequin. I did one inch. So with that one inch measurement off to the side here, we're going to go ahead and do the, the eight, eight head length version of a person. So I just drew multiplied by eight, whatever length of head you drew. So it's easier to just draw a head first and then measure it and then duplicate that eight times. And then off to the side, we'll, we'll label one through eight. So anytime you're drawing a person, a model, it's good to take note of how many heads tall that person is, because that's going to help you see where, you know, the smallest part of their waist is going to fall um, in your drawing, where you know, their elbow should be, where all of those specific body parts need to go in relationship to that person's body proportions, because it's different for everyone. Okay, so I'm just numbering all of my head lengths down the side. And this is just to get a sense of what eight head lengths looks like. And then now we can adjust our drawing. So if the second head length needs to fall at the the nipple line on the, the mannequin, then I want to make sure that I get that, that shape to happen right about there. And then I need the smallest part of the waist. There, I need the bottom of the, the hip shape to be at the, the bottom of the fourth head length. You can add these shapes for the, the arms. The elbows are typically in line with the smallest part of the waist. And that's tends to be on pretty much everyone. Um, the tips of the fingers are going to be in line with the bottom of the fifth head length and you can, you know, double check that on the person you're drawing or double check it with the model. Um, like I'm looking at my wooden mannequin right now and I can see that uh, the wrists are going to fall right about the same place as the bottom of the the fourth head length and like these little connecting sockets on the wooden mannequin are in line with each other there. So this doesn't have to be a beautifully rendered sketch here. We're just getting an idea of these proportions. So first head length is the bottom of the chin. Second head length is that nipple line. Third head length, smallest part of the waist. Fourth head length, bottom of the hips. 
fifth head length is about mid thigh. I'm just gonna double check where the sixth one was on the mannequin again one more time. So it was the bottom of the kneecap. So I can go ahead and just sketch the kneecap right above the six line. And then the bottom of the seven was about mid calf and the little ankle line was about right here. So I'm kind of making sure everything lines up first before I sketch the rest of the shapes. That way I don't have to make too many adjustments. I'm just kind of doing the foot like that since it's pointing at me right there. And this is going to look really stretched out and long, you know, that's why I used to always jokingly say call the wooden model Giselle because it's, you know, lot, very long limbs and long torso and not all of us are created that way. So, you know, if we're talking about someone like me who's six and a half of my head's tall, then right here is where the bottom of my feet would be. So you would be making all these adjustments for, um, you know, my, my body proportions. So eight heads tall is, is a very lengthy individual. But you know, it depends on that person's head size too. Um, there's some people I can just look at them now after all my drawing time and like look at the size of their head and look at their height and instantly be like I bet you're eight of your heads tall and then sure enough because one time at a dinner party this came up and we were all measuring our head lengths and we were laughing because um I said that to to someone in the in the party who's just very tall and has a had a very large head his wife was laughing and anyway he was he was eight of his heads tall I was right. Anyway, okay. Um, but yeah, and then this is something I always mention. So I've always tell this story whenever I'm teaching body proportion. So I might as well do it again. I used to have a friend who, well, we're still friends, but she used to be my neighbor. And we were the same height and about weighed about the same, wore the same size shoes, um, pretty similar and a lot of, you know, seemingly similar in body proportions you know, because of our height and weight and shoe size, but none of her dresses would fit me the way that you would think that they would. And we realized it's because um, I have longer legs than her and she has a longer torso. So the smallest part of my waist was not, you know, like all of these dresses that she had just didn't fit me correctly because we had different body proportions. Anyway, okay, so moving on, we're gonna do some gesture drawings tonight. So once you've established a basic idea of a, um, a wooden mannequin or sketch, sketch something with that's eight of its heads tall and all those links are falling in that way, then uh, you're ready to do some gestures. So gestures are, and then the class tonight was listed um, as, you know, drawing basic body proportions and bodies in movement. Um, and a gesture is exactly that. It's something capturing the movement of something. And when we're talking about movement in a figure, you want to look for this main line of movement. So if I were to sketch a line through this figure that I've drawn here, like what is the movement of this, like a vertical line, what is the vertical line of movement doing? It's doing something like that, right? It's like a, a bow, um, you know, like the bow and arrow type thing. It's from the crown of the head, we could sketch our vertical line right down the middle and then there's 
it's depending on which leg is more activated or if there's an arm in the image there, but you wanna to try to find one vertical line running through the length of the figure that shows the movement. And you can do this for anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be um, a figure. When I used to teach middle school and high school, um, and yeah, I can, I can zoom out a little so that you can see my, my full page there, but then I'll, I'll just zoom back in in a minute. Oh, does it wanna stay zoomed out? There we go. Oh, it keeps dropping back down, y'all. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll just, I just have to scoot it. I'll draw a little smaller on the, the gestures that I'm about to do so that it all fits in the frame. Um, or I can just hold it up like this while I, I do that. Okay, so there's this, this line of movement, right? And for this one, it's tilted the same way, but there's, you know, the arm is activating it a little bit more. So it might be more like from the, the tip of the fingers here, you know, is the, the start of that vertical line. So it's not necessarily gonna be down the center of the head, or we could do a couple of them and do from the crown of the head down this leg just noticing where the um, the line of movement is. And I was starting to say, um, when I used to teach middle school, uh, the way that I illustrated this, this idea was I set up a bunch of items around the room, like a, um, a jacket sitting in a chair. Um, I had an umbrella. I had um, a scarf, I had a lot of articles of clothing, but then I had uh, a bunch of balls that were stacked on top of each other. So if I just have, you know, and I had, I had them leaning against something so that they would all stack, what is the, you know, the center line of movement that you would illustrate for that, that stack of balls? It would be something like that. So you want to just, when you're looking at a figure that is in movement, a body that is in movement, notice where the the weight is being established in the, the figure. Like for, let's see. I'm gonna quiz you guys a little bit. I'm looking for one that's kind of obvious and one that's maybe a little more challenging. Okay, so this one's pretty obvious. Where is the weight? Where is the weight landing on that figure? Like, where is the weight the heaviest? What limb, what or what body part is holding most of the weight here? This one. You can just put it in the chat. I see some people raising their hands, but. Okay, yeah, on the, the right heel or the right leg. Okay, so, but how do you illustrate that? How do you make that so that a person looking at your drawing understands that the weight of the figure is on, on that right leg or on that right foot? That's what we're trying to figure out tonight, right? You're like, I don't know, tell me. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to try to establish. And then let's, so that one's kind of obvious, right? Because it, <laughs> I positioned it as if the mannequin is standing on its foot, right? Okay, but let's look at one that's a little less obvious where the weight. I don't know, they all seem pretty obvious to me, but where's, where's the weight on that one? You can just put it in the chat. Where do we think the weight is being held? All right, yeah, the left foot or the left leg. So when we're drawing this figure, we want to make it look like the person is leaning their weight on that on that left leg, right? Um, I saw. I'm trying, I try not to get too sucked into the chat and answer every question that pops up, but I saw somebody said, do the middle pick. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Where's the weight in this one? 
It's a really great question. Where is it in that one? Because I kind of made the, the mannequin float a little bit there. But there is weight um, that the majority of the weight is implied in the figure to be leaning in a certain direction, but it's not necessarily on a foot, which is where we want to we want to put it. Is it on the back foot? I know that back foot looks like it's in the air. Both feet are in the air. So where is the weight of the figure kind of leaning or heaviest? All right, great. Yeah, I saw somebody say the left hip. Yeah, there's definitely, and the, and the back is sort of, the head is leaning back. So there's, you know, this weight that's happening kind of on the back of the shoulders too. It's holding, holding them up. If this were a real figure standing like this somehow, jumping in the air, there would be a weight kind of at the back of the shoulders and a weight on that uh, left hip because there's a little bit more of a lean towards the left hip. Okay, great. I really just want to get you observing this. I've done a lot of years of hosting figure drawing classes and um, that and participating in them as well. But, you know, I have had a lot of beginners in figure drawing classes over the years. And um, that's the thing that, you know, people can draw a figure, they can draw a figure that looks like it's moving, but establishing weight is something that's very challenging. So hopefully we're going to do that right off the bat tonight with these gestures. So um, there's a few different ways you can approach this and there's really no wrong way. And I really, um, you know, suggest that you spend a lot of time practicing gestures like this. Uh, the best way to do this is to set a timer for yourself with your wooden mannequin and um, position it in a lot of different ways and then set a timer and for each uh, you know, gesture or movement pose that you give yourself um, about two minutes or five minutes at the most, but don't do any more than five minutes. One minute is another standard. Um, and I am going to use the, the timer on my phone to time a few of these um, towards the, the end of the class. But first, I just want to give you some tips for getting started with gestures. So you can do a stick figure. You can have a stick figure that has quite a bit of, of weight to it. Like if I take, I just started drawing without looking at one of my, my poses first. All right, I'm just gonna do one off out of my head. So if I did a stick figure like this, you know, I'm not even looking at a mannequin that has weight, right? It looks like the weight is leaning this way, let's say on, on this foot um, that's pointing in a crazy direction. And maybe, you know, leaning towards this shoulder and this foot, right? Not, not to scale or accurate at all, but we've got weight and we've got movement. So all of your gestures can be just that simplistic. They don't have to have, you know, any body proportions or anything because the goal of tonight is to capture basic body proportion, understanding and how to draw bodies and movement. And like I said, capturing that weight is the most important thing that you want to establish. Getting actual you know, proportions to be correct, I would say is secondary in terms of how you're going to be the most successful with figure drawing is focusing your attention on that first. You definitely don't want your attention to be on rendering, you know, the wood grain or the details. And I'm talking about the wooden mannequin now, but if we were drawing a model, you don't want to worry about that model's hair or facial, facial features or fingernails or you know any details on that person's body uh, just yet. You want to focus on capturing movement and basic proportions. All right, and then, and then if we were going to draw these gestures in very short amount of time uh, using the shapes, 
you want to keep everything moving really quickly. So I like to do kind of like a scribble sketch as I go and like more just keep my pencil moving the whole time and scribble and kind of find the different shapes. And I might not get the entire figure to happen if we were doing a one minute gesture, but any practice that you can get in is really beneficial because you're getting the, the looking practice. So that's one way to approach the gestures is to do this kind of scribble sketch or do the, uh, the stick figure that has, you know, an obvious center line of gravity and weight happening or the way that I think is the most artful and um, satisfying is to look at the light. So that's why I used a really strong contrasting light for all of these and why I pointed out, pointed out how my pencil is sharpened. So if I take this side of my pencil and I'm just looking at the shapes of shadows and shapes of light that I'm seeing on the mannequin, and so, and this is how I try to approach gestures when I'm drawing in a figure drawing class is I look for where the heaviest shadow is happening on that figure. And I don't worry about anything because my brain is pretty good at this point at capturing weight and movement in the process of sketching this way. And so I'm just sketching the light. So um, Peggy, you're probably gonna pronounce their name wrong, but Peggy wants to, um, to know what's more important when you're practicing getting the shape right or getting the proportion right? Um, at this point, I want you to focus more on movement, on the, the center line of movement. And then secondary would be, um, what were my choices, the shape or the light? the shape or the proportion? Um, let's go with shape, because if you're getting the shape right, then you're by default probably gonna get close to accurate proportions. Okay, so let's think about our full value scale. If this is your first drawing class in a while and you don't uh, know much about um, drawing, I'll just, uh, do a quick little value scale here. I'm using a 5B, by the way, nice dark pencil. Let me get a nice little gray scale going with that from darkest dark to the lightest light that I can get with just this pencil. And you can do this with any of your pencils um, just to you know, get a nice, try to go on the side of the pencil and do a continuous movement and then see how solid dark you can get that and then pull up on your pressure and try to get that to blend and we'll just get kind of a medium gray scale here from our medium gray to our darkest dark and you can do that with any of your pencils, like I said, and I, I've had multiple classes on this in this drawing series. There was a class on drawing lines and tones where it covers what the various um, pencils can do as far as different lines and tones that you can, can get with those. But for right now, I just want you to look at, you know, the shadows that are being cast. I'm looking at this one right here. And I'm looking at the darkest shape of shadow that I'm seeing there and there and there. And I'm just sketching those shapes of shadows. So this is the shadow that I'm seeing on the side of the head. And then I'm looking at where in relationship to that shadow would the next shadow happen. And it's right here. So I'm not worrying about any of the shapes on the figure itself, like the, the wooden mannequin shapes. Uh, necessarily. I'm not looking at those. I'm looking at the shadow shapes. And I'm just sketching my my gesture drawing based more on the shadows that I'm seeing. And I think this is the way that I would suggest you all attempt to draw these figures tonight. It might be a little counterintuitive for a lot of you. You might want to, you know, if you're absolute beginner, you're probably having a hard time not drawing this hard outline, you know, around the, the shape 
of the that's happening on the mannequin like maybe you're really fighting the urge to draw you know this on the the chest and this shape and so if it's really hard for you to get away from that and you really you know need to draw hard lines around things then you know try doing it this way but try doing that with the scribble sketch because the main point is that you want your gesture drawings to be nice and loose. So the looser you can be, the more likely you are to capture movement and the more likely you are to capture um, weight and the more likely you are to capture proportions. So we got to crawl before we walk, right? And sometimes jumping to those overall shapes on the form is something that comes next and next week in the premium class is where i'll be focusing my attention on really rendering this wooden mannequin figure but right now we're just trying to capture it in movement so that's a little wonky and it's not perfect at all but i just want to again we're not we're not going for perfection tonight i only have you guys for one hour and we're down to our last uh 17 minutes here okay so now we're gonna do some gestures so any questions about like how to get started with your gesture like any of these methods that i just outlined doing the the stick figure drawing or a scribble sketch or the value focused sketch which is what i'm um doing. the only question so far would be why is where the weight lands so important in the drawing process and how do you control the shading um okay so the weight is important because all uh forms have weight and particularly human beings um to to draw a convincing human being trying to you know establish where the weight is on that form is going to help you convince the viewer that they're actually looking at a you know a drawing of, of a human being in movement especially you know when we're drawing these gesture forms it's the difference between you know, making a person look like they're always floating in space and making a person look like they're standing on the ground or they're sitting in a chair or, you know, anything. It's, it's really the most important thing. I mean, when you draw an apple sitting on a table, you're going to probably put the shadow underneath the apple that's going to make it look like it has weight and like it's sitting on the table otherwise it's going to feel like an apple just floating in the middle of a page right um so it's just to to help it be a convincing drawing of a figure is why the weight is so important and like i said i've you know it's the thing that people struggle with the most so i thought why not focus my attention on it from the very beginning here um and then the second question was how do you control the value? Um, so I like to do a, think about, oh, first you wanna hold your pencil towards the back of your pencil and keep it parallel to the paper. And if you go back to my uh, very first class in this series, Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms, I spend a lot of time in that very first one hour class um, speaking about why it's so important to hold your pencil towards the back of the pencil and holding it parallel to the paper. So when you do that, it's a lot easier to control what you're doing because you, the movement is coming from your arm and not, um, I'm gonna switch to my, oops. I'll switch to my other camera for just a second here. So when I'm holding the pencil towards the back of the pencil like this and I'm drawing the movement is coming from my arm. So even if I'm doing a little focused movement, you know, a little continuous circle uh, to get some tonal shading, the movement is not coming from my wrist. Like it may look like it is, but I can feel it coming from my arm. Um, and if you're drawing, you know, with just your, your wrist, and you're holding your pencil like this, you're not getting the same range of movement and control that you would get if you held 
your pencil towards the back. So that very first class on uh, intro to graphite and drawing forms goes in depth um, with that if you're struggling with controlling your value. Okay, so I'm going to set um, a timer on my phone here for two minutes. Um, and this is what I do in any figure drawing class, or if you've ever attended a figure drawing class uh, with a live model, uh, you, typically the first 10 to 15 minutes will be gesture drawings and it will be one to two minute long poses and the model will be in very dynamic poses like this. And the reason they're so short is two minutes or one minute is um, one so that you can practice, you know, capturing movement in a limited amount of time for the artist it's very um, challenging and helpful and wonderful practice but also um, a human being can only hold you know their weight or that dynamic pose um, like that for so long before you know you're going to get a cramp if you stand balanced on one foot for too long and so that's why you know the, the longer poses that a model will be in for a figure drawing class will typically be them reclining or in a comfortable pose that they can stay in for a, uh, a long period of time. And I once even asked a model to stay in a gesture like pose, um, a very dynamic pose for 10, 15 minutes, and I felt terrible. It was obviously very hard to, to hold that pose for a long period of time, and I regretted it and I never did it again. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right, so I'm going to set my timer. We've got 12 minutes here, so we've got enough time to do several gestures. And if this goes too fast for you and you want to just watch or, you know, watch the recording later. All right, so I've started the timer. And just so you can see how quickly I might do kind of a combination of my scribble sketching and looking at the, the shadows. So I'm looking at this one and you can sketch along with me or you can just watch. Hopefully some people are sketching along so that we can see what you've created at the end of the class. Okay, so I've got pretty much the whole figure established there in terms of light and shadow. And I've got still a minute and 13 seconds left. So now I can go back and kind of look for, you know, start to define some of the shapes a little bit more and see if my proportions need adjusting. But in a two minute gesture sketch, I don't really worry too much about accuracy. It's really about the practice here. And any practice that you can put in with this skill set is so important. I mean, if you're only giving yourself one hour to do this drawing practice right now and you're not satisfied at the end of the hour, I would not be surprised. You really want to give yourself a lot of time to practice this. So maybe. If figure drawing is a goal for you, setting a timer for 20 minutes a day and doing gesture sketches where you're practicing, you know, just capturing movement and and weight like this. Okay, that was two minutes. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. And hopefully they're going to get better as you go along too. Like I even thought earlier today, wow, I haven't done any sketching today. Maybe I should sit down before I teach this class because the more warmed up I am, the better I'm going to perform when I'm doing these sketches for you guys. I can always tell when I've been drawing all day. If I attend a figure drawing class after drawing all day long, I'm always going to do so much better. Or I'm going to not be as tight. I'm going to be better at staying loose and, and capturing movement. So we had someone ask um, before they just drew, you know, the mannequin and movement, but they didn't, there wasn't any 
weight line. So if they draw the weight line first for guidance. Yeah, that can be helpful if you're having a hard time finding it. Um, or, you know, sometimes I'll do that like to get started. And that's another reason to practice this because I mean, I'm kind of telling you my preferences right now or, or how I get started or, you know, what this might not even be my preference a year from now. I go through different phases in my figure drawing practice as far as how I like to start or where I like to focus my attention, et cetera. Like, and everybody is different and your drawing practice will hopefully be different than mine. And, you know, try to take your instruction from lots of different figure drawing instructors too. If you just listen to, you know, one person and, and how they approach things, it's easy to, you know, get into like binary thinking about, about this process. Okay, so that's two. I wish I'd given myself a little bit more time for this, but I'm glad we spent all the, the time in the, the class the way that we did so far. But really, I like to get at least 10 gestures in as a standard practice for myself, because usually I'll like, you know, number five, six, seven, eight, like it's usually not the first gesture that I draw is ever my favorite one. Sometimes but it's usually like after more practice. So some of these I'm kind of doing a combination of the, and yeah, this would probably be a good one where finding that center line of gravity would be helpful. And maybe you need a few different lines of gravity. Like how is this arm coming out here? That arm is like that and that arm is like that. You could even do like a whole stick figure first and then add your value on top of it. So like I said, try a few different approaches. Don't just try one and then get frustrated if that one's not successful. And you're looking at, you know, ultimately to get proportions more accurate and I'll go into more depth with this next week in the premium class. Um, you're looking at the relationship of these body parts to each other. And you're looking at negative space. So like where, how much space is there between this arm and, you know, here. And you can even like, if you're working from something like this, you can kind of imitate the, the shape of the negative space to help guide you. Use everything you've got, guys. There, there's no rules. There's no such thing as cheating. I don't think when it comes to art because I use everything you got. Okay, let's see. I do a couple more here. This is a fun one. So this is another one where it would be good to do the, the center line of movement because the weight's kind of sitting back on the butt a little bit there. So the it definitely shifts, the line of gravity shifts a little bit here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the stick figure. Yeah, and that one, I really captured the movement with just the stick figure so far. And that has weight. I feel like that already has weight. And then now it's easy to fill in where the value is happening. Another way to um, make sure that you're capturing movement um, at the start of every figure drawing session, I can't believe I didn't say this right off the bat. Oh, sorry, my video just cut out a little bit. Oh, come back. <laughs> Technical difficulties. There we go. Um, nope. One moment, folks. I'm having some problems. Okay, 
Um, it's not recognizing one of my webcams. There it is. There it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, I meant to say this at the start of class. Another way to try to loosen up is to do a bunch of figure eights, and that will help. Um, you know, just keep your your pencil moving. I'm so sorry. My webcam is cutting out once again. Well, there's the end of that two minutes. Okay. Um, I think we're good. So yeah, doing some figure eights on the page is another way to loosen up and, and get movement going. All right, I'm gonna do one more uh, gesture here and then I'd love to see some of the other, um, some of your drawings. And I just realized one of my children's drawings is speaking through the sketchbook page there. So let me flip one more page. Oh, my daughter loves to draw in my sketchbooks. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one from a, this page. I'll do that one real quick. So the center line of gravity is like that. And then we've got arm movement there and that arm movement there. And this is the leg that's going back. And this is the leg coming forward. And then now I want to get that weight to feel like it's going on this hip. But yeah, and also don't focus focus on the weight thing so much if it starts to throw you off. The main goal would be to stay loose. Stay loose. Then your goal after that is to capture weight and after that proportions. And I definitely felt myself lose my flow that I had going there with my camera difficulties. I had a nice little flow and now I'm, I'm all tight again. I might as well be on sketch number one here. So, okay. <laughs> we, did, we did have someone ask, how would you draw a weight if someone is floating? Um, very carefully. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Um, notice where the weight on their body is. Um, seems to be leaning. So I would say the one that I, I did the, the best here would be that one is the one where I'm feeling the, the weight of that figure. And uh, yeah, so in a perfect world, we would have had time to do about 10 uh, sketches here like that. But you know, just to get everyone started and with the basics, that's where we landed. Um, does anybody want to hold up their um, their sketches? Did anybody else get some some gestures going that you'd like to share? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely seeing some movement in those. Oh, and I love, yes, I love how that one on the top left, I definitely feel some weight in that one. Oh, those are great. Feel the figures running in one of those and leaning. Those are great. And I love the, how you're doing the loose scribble sketch and that one on the left. You can tell you're really loosening up with that one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Great value. And ooh, those are wonderful. Oh, that one on the bottom left there. I definitely feel the weight of that one. Very nice. I see in that top one how the that leg is going out. You can feel the, the weight on the other leg. Oh, those are great. Oh, I recognize Arthur. He's one of our regulars there. Nice to see you. Those are great, Arthur. That one on the left there that's running is really nice. Oh, you guys did such a great job. Okay, I really feel like I did my job because these are some really great results. 
And if anybody wants these reference images that I used, oh, I love those notes and that one with the, the knee coming up. That's really great there. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and overlapping your sketches for gestures is a great practice too, to stay nice and loose and non-committal. You know, don't put so much weight to overuse the word weight, like don't put too much weight on any one drawing, like overlapping and sketching multiple sketches to a page like you all are doing is a great way to keep your practice flowing. Um, I'm going to put these images up on my Instagram. I just wanted to mention that I'll put them in my Instagram stories for anybody who wants, you know, any of these uh, references I used tonight. The images. Oh, these are so great. I feel like I've used the word weight so much, but I'm really seeing some great weight established in all of these sketches, y'all. I'm really impressed. That one on the bottom left there that you're holding up now, I really feel it there. All right, well, it's 7.02, so I'm going to go ahead and say good night. But if you'd like to join me on Instagram Live, um, in just a couple minutes, I'll be there to answer any more questions that you might have about gesture drawing and basic body proportions and hopefully I'll see you next week in the premium class on uh, rendering more realistic um, figures using the wooden mannequin again. Thank you all and have a wonderful evening.